ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder how many of our listeners have tried the breakfast plan that I mentioned the other night. Remember? A glass of Horlicks malted milk hot in the place of tea or milk or coffee. Besides being a delicious welcome change, Horlicks makes a fine, healthful beverage for young and old alike. A valuable addition to the diet. That's because of the vitamins and minerals that this famous malted milk contains. In addition to that, Horlicks is so much easier to digest that it keeps you feeling cheerful and alert all day. It agrees with the weakest stomach. So if you haven't any Horlicks in the house, get a package now from your druggist. Then start the day right, the Horlick way. You'll find many other uses for Horlicks also. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, the wedding of Evelina and Frank Foster has been definitely called off. And Lum is taking advantage of the situation by courting Evelina right off her feet. <laughs> her romance with Frank Foster just made the old fellow realize how much he really cared for her. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Dick Huddleston over at the Jot'em Down store talking with Lum and Abner. Listen. Yeah, I believe me and Evelina are more in love with one another now than we ever were. <laughs> well, it looked like old times to you two out there meeting together yesterday, Lum. <laughs> well, sure, my and I, everybody said that. Any number of them come up to us again, services was over, and told us how proud he was to see us keeping company with one another again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think nobody wanted to see her marry Frank Foster in the first place. I reckon that's the reason they're glad. Oh, that'd been the biggest mistake she ever made. Well, Lum, that sort of leaves it up to you now. You kept her from marrying Frank. You better get busy before somebody else tries to take her away from you again. Yeah, I think me and her will be getting married for long now. I've got to get me a diamond engagement ring from her. Well, now, she give Frank his ring back. Why don't you just buy that and offer him? I bound you'd sell it pretty cheap now. Well, Granny, that's right. I hadn't thought about that. Well, I doubt if Frank could sell it to you, Lump. If he knew what you wanted with it. Yeah, he's just mean enough to try to charge me two prices for it. Yeah, he's just like it. You ought to told Evelina not to give it back to him what you ought to did. Yeah, I'm not worrying about that. I can get her a ring, all right. I'm going to get her a solid 14 carat diamond. That'll make that little old ring he give her look like two cents. <laughs> well, man, I've got to get on back over the store. I left the wife to look after things, and she's got to take out and go to the house and do the washing. Yeah, well, I'm glad you stopped by, Dick. Yeah, come back again, Dick. Much obliged for bringing the mail over. Yeah. Well, that's all right. I'll come by here anyway. Yeah, Dick seemed to like the plans we got for remodeling our store, didn't he? Yeah. I believe that was a good subject he made there, though, about putting all the groceries on one side of the store and all the dry goods on the other one. Yeah, only trouble, it'll be a nuisance walking backwards and forwards that way. Be about my luck to be standing over on the grocery side and somebody come in and want some dry goods, yeah. dress pattern or something like that. And I'll have to walk clean across the store to wait on it. Yeah, like you said, though, it don't look right to have canned goods and shoes stacked right up in the shelf together that way. No, but I still say it's a heap handier that way. Wish we could run the store sort of like one of them cafeterias where we eat over at Greenwood. You mean put an eating place in here? No, but let everybody wait on themselves. They could go around and pick out what stuff they wanted, and me and you could stand up there at the front door and search them and take their money as they go out. Yeah, but supposing they go out the back door. Yeah, that's right. Looks like he's all or something. Wait a minute. Who's that driving up out there in front? Oh. Huh. Stranger to me. Yeah, I don't believe I even know the horse. Uh, he, he's a dressed-up sort of a fella, ain't he? Yeah, more like that drummer, is what he is. And he's just wasting his time calling on us, and we ain't buying nothing till we get this store remodeled. Ain't got no place to put the stuff if it was to buy. Yeah, come in, sir. Come right in. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, I just wonder if you uh, gentlemen could tell me where the old uh, Phil Robinson place is located. Oh, Robinson place? Yes, uh... I believe that's the name, Robson. Yeah, yeah. I reckon he means the old Uncle Phil Robson place, Abner, up there on Brush Creek. Oh, yeah, more like that. Yes, yeah, the Phil Robson place. I believe that is what they call it. Well, I can tell you where it's at, but there ain't nobody lives there. That farm's laid out now for about ten years. House is burned down and everything. Yes, I understand it is. Well, I wanted to look at it. I was thinking of building a summer home out there, a kind of a mountain lodge. Lodge? Well, of course, it's your own business, but... I don't believe you'll do no good with a lodge way out there. Most of us fellas around here belongs to the woodmen of the world anyway. No, no, no. I mean to fix the place up. Bring my family out here during the summer. 
You tell me there's some beautiful scenery around there. Yeah, well, I don't know where I'd say that or not. You can't see much of anything for the dead blame mountains out there. But if you want to go ahead out there, well, I can tell you how to go. Yeah, just follow that road right out there in front of the store till you get to the southeast corner of Uncle Henry Lunchford's fence. Well, he don't know where Uncle Henry Lunchford's place is, Abner. Oh, no, that's right. Well, it's the first place you come to on the right after you pass Ham Douglas is there. Yeah, well, Abner, this gentleman is a stranger. He don't know where Ham Douglas lives. Oh. i tell you what you do, mister. Just follow that road out there for about four miles and a quarter. You'll come to a fork. Now, the right-hand fork will take you down through Hogjaw Valley and over in the Crystal Hill settlement. Yeah. But you don't want to go that way if you're looking for the old Robson place, or no. that road bears sort of south. You want to go north, so you take the left-hand fork. Or just ask any of them houses along there, or ask the folks in them, rather. Uh, they, they can tell you where they, where they live at. Oh, yeah, yeah, they all know where it's at. Now, you might have to ford the river. It, it appears to me that I heard somebody say that bridge had washed out down there. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I think I can find it. Oh, yeah, you won't have no trouble. Yeah, I hope you decide to locate here. And if you do, don't forget you've got a complete line of uh, might not anything in the way of merchandise right here. Yeah. That is, except stick blueing and lamp wicks. I believe we're out of them right now. Yeah, but by the time he gets a house built and moved in, we ought to have one. Yeah. My granny, that's a right pretty ring you're polishing up there. Hmm. Is that a solid diamond? Oh, yes, yes, that's a three-carat stone. Yeah, that stone we've had in our family for several generations now. Well, a fella would never know it. It just sparkles just like a brand new one. Yeah, I'm going to get Evelina a 14-carat solid gold one. Yeah. Of course, you don't know Evelina, but her and me's liable to get married just any day now. She's single, too. Yeah, her, her and mom's got up a case. <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen, for the information. I'll have to be going. Yeah, not at all, not at all. Yeah, come in again. Yeah, I hope you locate here. Well, thank you. <laughs> he's right nice fellow, aren't he? Yeah, I hope he does move in here. Body can tell by looking at him, he's got money. Oh, yeah. yeah I bet he's richer than bottom land. We need folks like him here in the community. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind to join up with that lodge he's talking about putting in, but... I know Elizabeth never would let me out long enough at night to go clean out there to meet and wouldn't do me no good to join up. Well, I don't think that's the kind of a lodge he's talking about, Abner. Huh? Must have been something else besides the wood. He woodland. said lodge. That's what he said. Wait, wait, I wait, heard him. Wait a minute. Uh, What's wrong out there? Looks like he's lost something. Yeah. Must have dropped something in the road there. Yeah, we ought to help him look for it. Yeah, come on. Let's go out there and see if we can help him. Yeah, he's such a nice fella. I, I wish me and him was kin to one another. Well, he sure lost something, all right. Well, he's scratching around there in the sand there. Yeah, what's the matter? Did you lose something? Why, yes. I just started to cross the road here to get in the buggy, and I dropped the diamond out of that ring I was just showing you. Well, I do know where. Well, mm, that'll be hard to find there in that sand. Yes, it will. You're sure you dropped it right there, are you? Well, I had my handkerchief out polishing it and just happened to notice it was gone. Well, it ought to be around here summer, then. We'll find it shortly. Yes, I hope so. But I wanted to get out and look at that farm this afternoon. I've got to be back in Mean on time to catch that 7 o'clock train. Yeah, well, now, we'll find it. Don't you worry. Yeah, now. Now, don't worry. I- I'll run in there and get a flower sifter out of the store. Yeah, yeah. Our grannies, we'll sift every bit of this sand out here till we do find it. Yeah, that's the thing to do. We'll locate it. Well, I tell you, uh, I've just got to going out to that farm, made a special trip out here to see it. I can come back by here, and if you found it, I'll be glad to pay you for it. I'll give whoever finds it $200. $200? Well, we'll find it, then. Or turn this road upside down or one. Well, I hope you do. I'll be back sometime this afternoon. I appreciate you helping me out this Not day. at all, not at all, no. Now, get up, get up. Now, don't you worry now. We'll find it. You just go right ahead and look at the farm. $200. Here, I brung two sifters. Yeah, where's he going? Did you find it? Uh, no, no, he said he had to get on over there and look at that farm, but he, he's going to give $200 to whoever finds it for him. $200? Yes, sir. That's just what he said. Give me one of them sifters here. Yeah, I, <laughs> I told you he had a lot of money. Let me get to looking here. Oh, that gummit. Here comes Squire Skin. Uh, uh, no, that don't let on that to him. Uh, let him know what it is that uh, he's lost. You know, he'd about keep it. That's just about oh, what it happened. Yeah. Yeah, that fella never said, but I bound you that diamond's worth a thousand dollars to bound you. Yeah, yeah, I don't plan on the squire now, whatever you do. No, don't tell him what we're looking for, for he's a kind of a fella to try to beat somebody out or something. Why, sure. got over the way he did it on that circus deal. No, sir, me neither. Just doubt what he do is keep it for himself. Bought that circus for a thousand dollars and sold it for four thousand. Well, good evening, gentlemen, good evening. Howdy, Squire. Yeah, what's going on here? You lost something? Aye, well, yeah. What do you think we're doing, making mud pies? 
Well, uh, maybe I can help you here. I've got mighty good eyes. Uh, now, what is we're looking for now? No, nothing much. If you no. find anything, why, well, just let us know. We're just looking. Thought I lost something here a minute ago. Well, I'll declare. Well, look at here. Huh? I picked this up the first thing. It looks like a diamond here. Let's see that, Well, squire. I'll be dead blame. That's just what we're looking for. Uh, I'll give you $10 for that, Squire, right now. Not ask no questions. No, no, no. I, well, I couldn't think of it. Lum, uh, this stone here is worth a lot of money. You can tell that. I know it, but I want to get it back for this friend of mine. It's yeah. his, and I don't want it for myself. I'll give you $25 for it. I don't get I'll give you $50 for it. 75 Well, give me $100, and I'll turn it over to you. The first one that gives me $100... Can have this on. <laughs> well, it looks like the old fellows might get back a part of that money that Squire beat them out of in the circus business. And now, here's a scene that most of you will recognize. Miss Grace Bradley and their friend Miss Martin are looking over the menu in a Cleveland restaurant. Listen. Well, Joan, what do we have? I know what I should have. Nothing. Oh, go on. You must eat. Well, you're not that heavy. No, and I'm not that light either. And to think what I've done to get my weight down. I must have spent a fortune, Grace. And just look at me. <laughs> Did you ever try that weight control plan you hear about over the radio? On the Lum and Abner program. Never did. Guess that's one plan I've missed. Well, I never have either. I don't need to. But I've heard a friend of mine talk about it. It's called the Horlick Weight Control Plan. How does it work, Grace? Oh, why don't you talk to my friend about it, Joan? Her name's Mrs. Jackson. She's tried it, and it worked wonders for her. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our scene changes to the home of Mrs. Jackson, Grace's friend. It's later the same day. Joan Martin, taking her friend's advice, has called on Mrs. Jackson. Listen. And is that all there is to it? Just a glass of Horlick's malted milk in place of a heavy lunch? That's all there is to it. But, Mrs. Jackson, I'm used to a big midday meal, you know. Won't I get hungry later in the day? Not a bit. That's the beauty of the plan. Horlicks readily takes the place of a heavier meal because it's so very satisfying. That's why the plan's so safe. And you can take a second glass later at the fatigue period in mid-afternoon. If you, you know, feel that you need it. Or you may dissolve a few Horlicks lunch tablets in your mouth for quick energy. Mrs. Jackson, I'm really awfully grateful for all you told me. I do want to control my weight. And I know you will, Miss Martin. I'll never forget what Horlicks has done for me. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks. We now bid you all good night and good health.